This is the first time I've told anyone this story, and it may be my last. I don't have much time to explain, just understand that YouTube is the best way to get this out, because on YouTube, you can download the video yourself, you can use a Wayback Machine to get it back, you can do pretty much anything, redistribute it, whatever, just please share this video, redistribute it, and allow other people to see this. Because they found me, and I'm unsure how long this will stay up on the channel. So, without further ado, why don't I go into the story itself? The year was 1994. I was a 15-year-old who lived in a small town mainly dominated by churchgoers and elderly couples who simply did not get along. So there was never really much to do. The only things that really captured my attention at the time were video games and sometimes television. They were pretty basic at the time, you know, nothing too well off. It was the beginning of the Polygon Age, so you got a few 3D ones. But my family wasn't very well off to purchase such luxuries as home gaming systems. It's kind of sad, I know, but the thing is, is that the best I really had was the Atari and some of the really old ones. I think I might have had an NES at one time, but the best I had was, again, an Atari NES and an old computer that could barely run really anything. It was in the middle of the summer when talk started to spread of a penny arcade moving into the building where the old videotape store was. My friend and I, we will call him Terry, were beyond excited, seeing as it was much more economically friendly an option for us and our parents to get the choice to play a video game straight out of my video gaming magazines. The posters were all around town too, and bright, playful, detailed screens that would be this arcade. It would open on a Saturday at 9 a.m. We were all so incredibly excited, and the thing is that the timing was incredibly convenient because Terry and I had already planned a sleepover that Saturday night. I brought my magazines to Terry because his mom wasn't willing to spend any money on gimmicks like that, she would say. We stayed up until the wee early hours in the morning, flipping through them over and over until we drilled every game made to date into our heads. Eventually, we both passed out on the floor with the lights on, magazines out, minds full of wander. I woke to the sound of Terry's mom leaving for a weekly church service. Looked to the wall, ready to read, 8 o'clock, 06 a.m., I was wanting to get there early, so it could be first in line. I, I woke Terry and told him to get ready. We both took showers, changed out of yesterday's attire into something more fresh, and snagged some change that Terry's mom had left us on the kitchen counter. Before he ran for the door, I looked at the clock. 8.47 a.m. It took us about 10 minutes to walk there, and when we approached, there was a line at the door. Fuck. There were only a handful of people, no kids our age, just some older social rejects who had nothing better to do. We jumped in line to secure our spot as fourth and fifth people to enter the arcade. We cupped our eyes against the arcade window from the front to block our eyes from the sun from the back. And what we saw blew our 15 year old minds rows upon rows of arcade games that we could not hope to run or see at home. Then something caught my eye. Two, two, two large double doors with the writing, Virtual Reality Experience. To hear those words, virtual and reality, in the same sentence, back then made absolutely no fucking sense to me. So it intrigued us to the point of making it the top of our agenda for what to do at 9 o'clock when those doors opened. The arcade game sprung to life in a fantastic display of lights and color, doors open, and a bald man with a scar on the side of his head walked out and gestured the small lineup that we could enter. As I walked past him, he gave me a blank stare. A very uneasy feeling erupted from his face and spreading to me. We continued through the double doors into a fantastic space full of light sounds and excited me and Terry and I and my friend, and I, and Terry, even more. Without saying a word, we ran through the large double doors and pushed them open. They were surprisingly light, and we both stumbled into the room. There was a bald woman with a scar on her head standing next to a table with multiple bulky circular gadgets on it. 
Uo stood up straight, slightly embarrassed, and proceeded towards her. She held out her left hand and silently pointed to the paper on the table to her right. Two quarters per player for the most immersive gaming experience in this day and age. Fight off an alien race that is attacking the moon base. You're their only hope. Terry took out his mom's coins and handed over one dollar and change to the bald woman. She blankly took the money and grabbed the bulky circular gadgets on the table, gesturing for us to do so as well. We both grabbed one and watched as she placed it on her head, surrounding it like a helmet. We wanted to do the same thing, but she seemed to gesture us not to do so. She went through a side door and came back with two Star Wars looking blaster devices. Terry and I excitedly snagged them into our hands as we examined it all. They were surprisingly heavy, but firm. They felt really good in the hand, as if I could actually fire it. The woman pressed a button on the thick metal door, and then it slid open. She walked through it, and we followed attentively. Walking down a flight of stairs, and we came into a long, narrow hallway, which led to even more stairs, and... Then I started to get a little bored and a little annoyed. However, after enough stairs and walking and hallways, we came into an incredibly large room. Other than a black and red striped door on the other side of it. The walls of the entire room were covered in a opaque-like glass structure. Terry and I shot each other excited glances, and then we proceeded into the middle of the room. The woman helped us equip the helmets and the blasters. We couldn't really see anything, thinking that it was some sort of joke. I was about to take off my helmet, and then it came to life. The screen inside the helmet lit up, and I looked around to see a totally different place than the strange room before. We were on a we were on the moon, on the outside of a building with Canadian flags on it. I looked towards Terry, and he was in an astronaut suit, bearing some sort of blaster, or bearing the same blaster as we was as we were before. I heard a screech ring through my helmet that made Terry and I jump. Sound on the moon? What the hell? I mean, like. Well, it is a video game, after all. We turned towards the origin of the horrible sound to see what I could only describe as a true monster. It was a lanky creature that crawled on all four legs. My first thought was that it, its face was made up of two deep black holes that are presumed to be eyes. It looked sickly and injured as it moved towards us in a grotesque-like fashion. Its face opened up to form a mouth before rows and rows of really sharp teeth. It paused its advance and stood up on its hind legs, exposing claws that looked as if they could slice through human flesh like butter, and then it lunged towards me with surprising speed. I froze. Time felt slow as I watched the monster gracefully soar through the air towards me, mouth open, claws outstretched. I was suddenly violently knocked it aside as a rod of fire blew a chunk out of its torso, which sent it flying. I looked at Terry and saw his barrow smoking. This brief moment of surprise was interrupted by more shrieks from other monsters arising in the distance, shaken up from almost losing a in-game life of my first moments. It took me a second to understand the situation. Protect the space station. Kill the monsters. Stay alive. Easy enough, right? A burst of adrenaline hit me as the monsters came into view over the craters and the hills. There were at least 20. And they weren't crawling like the last one, but rather running towards us on two legs, spastically waving their claws around. Every part of their body was twitching in an extremely odd manner. Try to think the twitches from Dead Space 3 much more disturbing as they were running at you into view. Without hesitation, Terry and I started using our weapons against them. They got about 10 meters away before the last one collapsed into the ground motionless. More monster screams came from behind. They were nearly upon us, too many to specifically say. Terry and I began to fire uncontrollably into the mob of creatures as they stampeded towards us. Terry was firing at the ones in front of me and as was I. I realized too late that Terry's actions were foolish. The monster started to pi pile onto him, pouring down onto him, covering him from view. But then I heard something rather odd. 
I heard him screaming in pain, firing wildly into the crowd of creatures. I managed to take enough of them down before they started back up, realizing that I was a fret. They crawled back over the hills and craters, revealing Terry's body to be motionless on the ground. I had stared at him for a minute or two, contemplating on what exactly I should do, how, and when. I just didn't know. Oh my god! I turned to see the creature, larger than the others, slowly striding on two legs across the lunar surface towards me. Its claws were noticeably longer, its teeth curled inwards, and I, I then switched my focus from Terry to the monster, and just as I did, I, it stopped advancing on me. It turned to the right and started walking towards the horizon. It slipped, lifted off its narrow, nightmarish-like claws, and slashed into nothing. But just as it did this... I, I, on what I could only describe as a ripped, rip in air formed. I kept striking, or I, I it kept striking until the rip turned into a hole. It disappeared into the hole, and I stood there, confused. I heard screams from other humans and ruined electronics. For a split second, I the message, error, o o o one slash power removed was displayed in front of me. Then everything went dark. I waited for a few moments before taking off my helmet, and then I saw what I could only describe as absolute carnage. Creatures with chunks blown out of them were scattered everywhere across the large room, surrounded by pools of yellow ooze. I looked to my feet to see Terry lying on the ground with various lacerations covering his body. Crouching down, I took off his helmet. It was quite easy to tell that he was dead. His skin looked odd. Now, when I say odd, I, I don't mean as in what you would normally expect a dead body to look. He seemed to lose all color in his brown skin. In fact, he seemed to be downright pale. His eyes were sunken in. Now, uh, and also fucking bloodshot. Now, another odd thing is that the areas around his eyes looked pitch black, almost as if he hadn't slept in three days. This was nerve-wracking to me. It, 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 it scares me to this day just to think about. Oh my god. The shock of my best friend's death was interrupted by the walls opening and more monsters surging out. Instinctively, I raised my blaster and started firing, and it worked just as well as it had in the game, dropping them as they came out. From the hole it kept in the bay. Finally, they stopped coming, and I stared at the top of the gap in the wall. No, no, more emerged from the darkness beyond the glass opening. I looked more around the room to notice that the black and red striped door had been ripped down. Realizing that it was my only exit, I moved into it and I walked through the remains of the door. I was now in some sort of control room. The bald male bodies were scattered around with blood covering most of the floor. All the electronics had been destroyed, bearing huge claw marks. The silence of the room was interrupted by movement behind me. The large creatures emerged from the dark hallway, and I hunched over it through the gap, bearing teeth and claws as it approached with some sort of deep, groggy scream, just as I had heard before. And without even questioning my actions, I pulled out my blaster and sprayed across the room at the horrifying creatures. It crawled into the darkness in which it had came from. Then I heard some sort of sort of scampering down, some sort of odd scratching noise, and then it just faded into nothing. I walked towards the darkness, blaster strong I had my blaster drawn, and I was swallowed by it. Swallowed by this odd sensation. I felt my way I felt my way through the black hallways and up the staircase for what seemed like an eternity, occasionally feeling the long scratches in the walls left by the monsters and the low growls of metallic bangs that echoed through the unexplored corridors. My curiosity was cut short when I turned a corner to see light coming through a smashed window on the above floor. The wall and the floor were littered with long scratch marks, yellow ooze and broken glass. I that the staircase had come to a small room filled with blasters and a slightly open door. Peeking through, I saw a woman. The same woman who had directed me and Terry into this horrible mess. I burst through and aimed my blaster and held the trigger until she was unrecognizable. 
My mind went numb with the pure rage of my best friend's death. From nowhere, a bald man swarmed to the scene. I stood there with cuts and bruises, yellow ooze covering my entire body. They all blankly stared at me, shoving through the crowd, and I ran out of the arcade blaster in my hand. That was years ago. I, I can't even count maybe 20, 21 years ago now. I'm unsure. And that bald, scared man had been pursuing me ever since. I often think about the time me and Terry spent in that game. How it could have played out differently. If not for him, we both would have died in that horrible place. I've tried telling others, but I, I've given up a long time ago for... I'm pretty sure no one believes a single fucking word that comes out of my mouth. I went out to the coast, but it doesn't matter how far I go. They seem to always catch up with me. I, I see them walking out in the streets, in the restaurants, even the TV. I swear one of them even looks like Terry sometimes. Sometimes I hear the shrieks of that monster in the distance. I fear that my time may be short as I write this. There's a bald, scared man sitting under the light of a bus stop across the street blankly staring at my house I hear scratching noises accompanied by the occasional low groggy tone I die here as I upload this to YouTube goodbye